Welcome to Sketchy. My number is 14, and with me as always, the mysterious Mr. B. Yo. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about the Olympics, because we're not over it, because it's still happening, and it's still a goddamn disaster. This is happening. Yeah, so that's our first bit of news, and we're also going to be talking about my review for No Man's Sky, because... Gotta have one. I I am a loser who doesn't do anything other than play video games for now, so um, you're going to hear my thoughts about it. That's... uh, that's unfortunate on you. But first, what, what are you, you drinking? drinking? Well, let me tell you what I'm drinking. I'm drinking some uh, of that good old Nova Scotia beer, Alexander Keats, which is kind of like the most tame beer that you can get, really. It's just it's pretty tame. Let's not lie. And I am drinking also from the same brewery, their premium white white beer, which is uh, like those... those uh, you know, it's just dirty. Moon beers and vices that you... You love so much in the uh, in the Wisconsin area of your fine country, yeah. Americans. Wisconsin, where they have a lot of Germans. Yep. 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 And the Pennsylvania area, too, apparently had a lot of Germans as well. So Coincidence? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> let's, let's start first. Uh, what did you do this weekend, actually? Well, this weekend... Uh, I sort of got sucked into helping someone out with what I thought would be a really small project. Wait, 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 wait. Your what? fault or their fault that the 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 idea was not fully described? It well. wasn't described very well at all. It was like, uh, anybody know PowerPoint? Like, well, yeah, okay, what do you need, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> There's not buddy. What do you need, buddy? And uh, several days later, it looks like it's finally come to an end. Seriously, your whole weekend has been booked up. I was like, hey, B, what are you doing? Let's go out and have like some breakfast or whatever. Yeah, no, nope. nope. PowerPoint. But uh, you know what? It's, it's cool. They might have a, a good spinoff. We have a new idea to take the sort of graphic novel genre and really exploit some of the animation capabilities and sound and uh, interactivity. That's the most important part, actually. Interactivity. As far as I'm concerned, it's not so much that... Because there are many other mediums where we could have much media. better... Uh, or media that we could use that are much better at kind of giving a, a, a specific effect. This is more like a combination of different things that could be done. It, it reminds me of what people were doing in Flash a little while ago, but kind of neat to to rig up what's normally a boring office tool to do some really cool art so <laughs> we'll, we'll see yeah, what comes out of it it's it's you, before you thought it was boring we're gonna make powerpoint exciting as shit <laughs> extreme yeah. we're, we're gonna make powerpoint seem as though it's some kind of movie maker or whatever it's gonna be weird it's gonna be definitely be weird but things are gonna uh, get weird it's all part of this new thing that I've I've decided to devote myself to. So it's called Microsoft Office. No, just kidding. So before you know, I when I was a kid, everybody thought that eventually, because I spent so much time drawing. I mean, I I don't know if you remember me in high school, but I probably had my head buried in a fucking like notebook or a notepad or something, or just scribbling all fucking day long. I mean, that's that's why I failed advanced math in level four when I was like the. You have to actually pay attention. <laughs> when you're doing the higher math. <laughs> uh, details. Details. Yeah, never really good at that. But I was always more interested in drawing than everything else. And when I was a kid, everybody thought that's what I was going to do. But in a sense, I think I rejected it after a while because I didn't want to just be known as the guy who draws, right? I wanted to explore other parts of my personality. I mean, you fucking draw every day. Like, you know, like I, I don't even know how many hours a day I drew. It's sick. I, I have no memories from my childhood as a result. Sick. All I see is a white fucking pad of paper and a pencil drawing a whole bunch of shitty drawings until it started to look somewhat decent. And it, that took so many years, you have no idea. <laughs> I know, right? So what did you do this weekend? Well, um, I went to a company barbecue. For those of you who do not know, I actually have to have a 9 to fiver, which is like unfortunate. But that's how you pay them bills. That's hardly sick at all. But um, I'm not 9 to 5. I'm more like 5 to 9. So really, in, uh, I'm, I work 26 hours a week, which according to the University of Melbourne's recent study is the optimal amount of time that any human being should be working in order for them to be both productive, happy, and so on and fucking so forth. But I refuse to work full time like people because you know what? I would rather reduce my quality, you know, like uh, my, my standard of living really than my quality of life. I consider my quality of life to be uh, extremely important. What is happening? 
<laughs> we have a, a tweet storm what is uh, going happening. On here? Yeah. Tweet what, storm. Are you are you being bothered by this PowerPoint I'm, I'm trying to person? No, no, that's over. No, that's right. over. I, uh, well, for now it's yeah. over. Some oh. other douchebags trying to get a hold of you on a Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Well, you have you have certain obligations, I suppose. Though you right. gotta go pick somebody up. Is that who's messaging you? Like no, like, no, like no. A it's jealous ex girlfriend. Like what yep, the fuck yep. is happening? All of all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, the the office barbecue was just. I don't know if you were you outside yesterday. Did you do something? Because that was so ridiculously gorgeous. It was great. I feel, I feel bad for anybody yeah. who was not outdoors and. You know what? You should enjoy this kind of weather while you still can because the earth is on a fucking downward spiral because this has been the hottest summer ever. Like, n not, not, oh, I, in, since memory. No, no, ever. I think the last time summer was this hot was when a meteor had hit the earth and uh, forests were on fire or something fucking ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just getting hot. Have you noticed? And it's a little steamy, yeah. And there's still some fucking douchebags out there that are like, oh, global warming may not be real. Dude, did, how's your electricity bill in the summer now? You know, it used to be nothing, I bet. And now it's just fucking going through the roof. But uh, let's not pay attention to that. It doesn't matter. Right? No, it's, it's not just... even happening. Did you see that wonderful little uh, video with uh, Brian Cox having a debate with some Australi Australian politician with his... Oh, I'd like to see the empirical data that demonstrates global warming. You mean you'd like to see the data that agrees with whatever fucking conclusion you've already had, dipshit? Well, I'd like to be able to understand the data, too. This is completely unfair. How do you analyze this? Yeah, I'm like, you sh he showed you a graph, but I bet you you don't know how to make such a graph. Do you know that that involves math to make them graphs? Do you know? Do, do, can you even just oh, fathom that part? You can make stats say whatever you want. Yeah, sure. I guess you can. Nothing is real and proof is impossible. Except for usually when you look at probably the most peer-reviewed thing ever, really. I, I think apart from evolution, right now with the climate change... I would say more than evolution. Most, yeah, more, probably, yeah, actually. By just, just by now, just, be, just because we've felt the need to prove it. No, and the it's amount of been money proven. and eyeballs on it. Yeah, <clears> It's sure. already been proven. It's so... You're, you're, you're dealing with the most proven thing ever, and I'm sorry no, and, you can't and, understand. No, and the it. much more interesting question is the question of degree. Like, how far is it going? How, how much momentum does this whole process have? It's not whether or not it's happening. That's like the least important thing. Is is this uh, car race happening? Well, yeah, it's right in front of you. You want to know who's winning, who's losing. Come on. Yeah. You see all those beautiful lakes that uh, opened up there in Antarctica? Come beautiful on. lakes. Come on. Beautiful little lakes. Great fucking sign. Anyways... We got our head in the sand. We don't want to fucking see reality, and that's fine. That was my weekend of a beautiful day brought to you by environmental collapse. So, uh, yeah. It was still a good barbecue, though. You know, I think at least our lifetimes will probably still be okay. Yeah, sure. I can take some comfort That's in all that. I should care about, really. I mean, as a human being, I don't have any kids. Fuck you, world. Sure, I should be, like, totally basking. In this thing, but unfortunately, there's a part, uh, you know, voice in the back of my head that says, "Dude, nah, what the fuck, man? This is fucked up." Crank up the '90s greed tunes and drown that out. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? This this consciousness of mine is driving me nuts, and it and you know what it makes me? It makes Conscience. me angry. Yeah, sorry, it's making me angry at humanity for being like in such denial, such denial. Because if you really rounded up how many people actually agree with climate change you would be really disturbed it's probably about the same amount of people that believe in evolution right split down the middle 50 50 that's what we've been able to struggle to get to 50 50 and a lot of that 50 percent is a compromise where it's like oh god directed it he made it happen really because if you understand the process that means he's a fucking psycho like he, a psycho he wrote the jank ass simulator we're all living in he lived he basically invented a genocide simulator because that's basically how evolution works it's a giant genocide machine that's like we're gonna basically throw you to the grinder and whatever survives this fucking process can exist for i don't know a hundred thousand years until i wipe you out again like this is how it is that's just how it is Unless you're a turtle or a fucking spider, I mean, you've been living like about four hundred million years. You got you got something right going on. Some that, some that's my right. bounty to you. But uh, yeah, essentially, you know, you throw shit to the grinder. It's a terrible process. But this is what you know. The reality is, science does not want to be accepted by anybody. You live in a world 
where you can create your own narrative that's comforting and everyone's going to pat you on the back and say, you know what, because this narrative makes you feel better, that's a good thing. Yep, must be... Jank ass. Must be true? <laughs> Jank ass. Mm -hmm. Like I speak to people who tell me that they believe fundamentally that they have control over their world that it's, as it, long as you imagine something it's going to be it, true well that's the secret but yeah. put it out there oh and man. it will cometh back in your face yeah <laughs> secret i put a bunch of wishes and you know what i got in return a gamma ray in the face <laughs> and a wicked super virus yeah, well, no, you know what? The virus wouldn't even survive that gamma ray burst. So, nope. fuck them. It'll mutate into something that can hop it'll, around it'll, species to species. It'll turn into hot plasma. <laughs> you're a hot plasma mess, I'll tell you that much. You're, you're not even going to be, you, you know, the bonds of, uh, of, of your, your molecules will be nothing. You know, they'll be just torn apart. Fuck off. You're just dust at this point. Unbelievable. Anyways, that's the future. We should really check back in on the old Zeke Olympics. What's so, going on? So okay. So for the if you guys don't remember, for the last three shows we've been talking about our predictions, and we have written them down because I think last show we were a confused mess and we didn't actually know which ones, and so I didn't want to do that again. We're going to reiterate the numbers because I've realized now that some of these predictions are going to be over the next few months. We're going to have to fucking come back to them. The Olympic disaster has just begun, man. It's only just begun. So, okay, I'll, uh, my number five, I'll, I'll count down to number one. My number five was there would, be, there would be some sort of incident or several catastrophes in the athlete's village. We haven't heard anything recently about uh, no, catastrophes we, th in the there village. No, there was itself. a flurry of photos of, like, incomplete shower heads and knobs breaking off sure. and uh, ladders from construction crews, like, left in, in rooms. But I guess there was no major collapse of uh, an athlete's uh, not yet. housing. Not yet. Not yet. And, um... Well, I imagine you throw up a fake building. Can it survive three weeks? Uh, there, I mean, there have been a few funny things coming out. Like, there was one team, uh, two, two ladies, if I'm not mistaken. We'll try to find the, uh, the source and the link. But they, uh, they had a falling out. They were on oh, the God, same yeah. team. Yeah. They had a falling out because of some kind of sexual escapade uh, where so one, of them, one of them locked the other teammate out. So they could basically have a bang fest all night long. So why didn't she just let her roommate in so she could watch? I guess, you know, uh, she wasn't a gold medal uh, orgist. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really. you got to be more open-minded. This was the solo division. you got to be more open-minded during the Olympics. Not the team division. Well, a lot of things will really break up a tight-knit... Uh, Olympic kind of style team. And, it's a pretty high strong yeah. banging <clears throat> is one of the things that uh, will really tear humanity apart. You know yeah. what? They they should have anticipated this kind of thing would happen and they should have had a coach and a game plan. Stick with the plan. I don't think that a coach could foresee that there's going to be boy trouble. Like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, you're at, right. At some you're point, right. we all probably, but you know what? Boy trouble. You're an athlete that's a dude. There's probably going to be girl trouble, too. Oh, two uh, super fit athletes are going after the same girl, and she only likes one of them, and she doesn't like the... Like, this kind of high school drama shit probably happens all the time because some of them are high school age. I mean, one of our uh, one of Canada's Olympic medalists is 16 years old. 16, okay? Surrounded by a lot of hot dudes who work out. Yeah. I mean... In in Rio, it's legal, I guess. Whatever is happens it? there, I guess. Six, I don't knows. know what the age of consent is, but I can guarantee you it's below sixteen. Okay. Holy moly! I can fucking guarantee you. Holy Actually, I think moly! Actually, in Canada, it is sixteen. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Wow. It's anyway. It's pretty messed up. I'm we've, like, we've gone down down a weird <clears throat> dark alley here in I'm, Brazil. Yeah. So, uh, nothing major has happened. Not, not in, for that uh, one. Not the for athletes' that one. village. What was your number five? Number was... five was the uh, third world would start to really pick up medals in outdoor swimming competitions, but uh, I don't know if most of this have actually happened yet. Yeah, I don't know. So far, I've only heard of uh, someone getting malaria and falling into a coma. Well, those were people falling out of their boats. They're, these were not people swimming in and the water. And someone getting really sick. Yeah, exactly. Th these were just 
momentary contacts with the water. So I don't far, think that the I, actual like long term you're gonna swim a few miles in human feces parts have actually happened. Yet. Right. Now I haven't seen any of that. So a couple of the predictions this one's probably more of my have long yet term. to happen. Yeah. yeah. We'll we'll revisit those later. So okay. Your number four was But anyway, we're predicting like a Ganges superhero who's gonna dominate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying like that that sick event would be like, and so India wins both gold and he silver. He was raised in it. <laughs> You, would, you 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 privilege white people with your uh, totally uh, disinfected uh, environments here. Yeah, stand. no yeah, chance, yeah. no chance. My my number four was basically Zika, and uh, you know we've that's heard a of, long term one. Yeah, that's a long term one. We'll have to check back. We're but Z- to Zika back is back. apparently hitting uh, Miami right now. Yeah, and they found that actually it may cause brain damage in adults. As in well. adults, and may yeah. last in the male sexual tract for up to six months. Fantastic. So uh, it's gonna get worse. Mm-hmm. Four it Long goes term away. One. Okay, yes. my number four, uh, you know, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, emergency teams disguised as robbers, uh, but the crime has spiked in the last few days, according to uh, various reports. So I'm still hopeful that this one's going to be like a, you know, coming in right at the last second when as as athletes are leaving or or, or something right. later happens. And then they get Security robbed. shakedown at the airport or something crazy yeah. like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, okay, I was predicting number three, a uh, major transportation breakdown, like a, a new tunnel collapse or a major highway collapse. Or Nothing major Something so far. like that. No, but there have been uh, various one. buses that have, like Olympic buses that have taken the wrong turn, got caught in Rio traffic, <laughs> athletes have missed their events, or in, in one case they had to postpone it. Um what I, what a side effect I did predict was that there would be many empty stadiums. Yes, that's that true. That were empty. So far, you're like, we're going to give you like uh, half a point. Yeah, and that, that one came true, but just because of poverty and madness. And uh, do you, actually, there was um, the IOC official that was busted scalping <laughs> tickets for very high end, you know, seating right up against the uh, you know the, the the border of these these events. Well, right now, um, actually, for like hundreds of dollars. But everybody's hundreds. trying to make some money. I mean, the auctions have already started. But these are IOC people. The auctions, anyway. auctions for shit has started because they're so desperate to offer <laughs> right. shit uh, to make some money because everything's for sale. Oh, the shortfalls that you're going to get from the Olympics hasn't happened. Do you know what? Okay, so I'm going to go on a tangent for three seconds here, but I, I think it's really important for people <clears throat> to understand the dangers of creating. And believing in false narratives. And I'm going to use the U.S. election as a perfect example of this. All right. Now, uh, if, if you've been following it for a while, you know that uh, Donald Trump, for instance, has been really lagging the polls because it turns out the man has no stamina. I mean, I, I'm not using this as some kind of sexual uh, you know, analogy, but there's, I mean, American politics is his fucking stamina game. And so all of his team has been so busy ignoring reality. They're like, oh, you can't listen to polls. You should just go to the events. The people who are there are so enthusiastic. It's amazing. And you're like, yeah. George McGovern, when he was running against Nixon in the 1970s, had the same phenomenon. His crowds were so electric. Yeah. He lost 49 states. Okay? <laughs> That's a major loss. And, and so you, what you have to do is you have to stop living in your little bubble and see that reality is bigger. And eventually reality bitch slaps you in the face. I mean, there was a Fox News analyst who pointed this out. She said, we need to stop lying and saying that polls don't matter because we saw the same thing when Barack Obama was elected. And I'm like, yeah, you can com- create this fake world of facts that you're like, I'm so happy in there. It's wonderful. And then when it collapses on your ass, yeah, that's the reality check that everybody has every once in a while. So creating your own reality may seem great uh, until, of course, reality comes crushing. Feels good. It. Feel, it sure feels good. Until the set collapses and squishes you. <laughs> the set, literally. The yeah. set, yeah. Like the 2D set fell on you. So what was your... Um, so, so you had the transportation... Yeah, uh, transportation breakdown. breakdown um, you know, take, the stadiums are empty. They are very There empty. have been a few delays here and there because of idiocy, but... Uh, no, nothing major. No, no, no kind big of like collapse. People, no, no people trapped. In no crazy yet. action movie sequences. No, or anything. not yet. No, no, nothing like uh, that Sylvester Stallone right. uh, movie. What was your number three? Number three was a sniper. Because mm. I think everybody forgot about the sniper guy, and I guess maybe he's he's still out he's there. He's still out there, but he has not. He has yet to fire anybody. Although some of those bullet holes have been found everywhere. Maybe him. Trying to get better? I mean, we don't know if he's good. He's probably no good. He's probably a shitty sniper. You know what? He's he's complete. This is strategic. He's learning. He's letting everyone think 
that he's no longer a problem. Well, you know, when you talk about Sniper trying to get their bearings, so it turns out that Lee Harvey, Harvey Oswald actually tr attempted to assassinate someone before Kennedy. Really? Yep. He was an Army general. I forget what his name well, was. Well, if you trust the narrative... Uh, well, I've, I read a book called Reclaiming History, which is the, the most thorough examination of the entire thing. And like, I, and, and I've read several other articles written about Lee Harvey Oswald. Like, he had a fucked up past. Like, did you know that his, his wife was still secretly in love with her ex-boyfriend who looked exactly like JFK? And she used to hang a picture of JFK and make him feel, like, sexually inadequate? Like, what? Yeah, yeah, some weird shit. Anyways, so it turns out that he actually had attempted to assassinate this other guy, but he had missed him when he had tried to fire through a window. But he had the the shrapnel had actually still injured um, and and hurt this this other guy. So, you know, uh, a sniper just needs some time to 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 get a little better. Right. But right. Uh, <laughs> But that's how they start. Like they everything start. in Brazil, he's completely disorganized, and mm -hmm. he'll... Uh... I mean, that's the only saving grace right here, like, that this sniper sucks. Yeah. It really sucks. Yeah. So maybe he's not going to get 15 kills. He might only be five. What's scarier? Yeah. Uh, Brazilian sniper or, like, a German sniper? I don't know. Yeah, see, you know what I mean? There you go. Yeah, you said that, and I shit my pants when you said <laughs> right, that. Right, <laughs> I'm like, is he outside? Does he have a beat Terrible. on me? Anyway, Goddamn. Oh. Hopefully he just uh, forgets uh, what forgets his mission and <laughs> hangs out on the beach. Yeah, exactly. Has a beer or two. So what was your number two? Number two, uh, I was thinking that there would be a doping scandal involving Mother Russia. Um, it's unfolding. Because it was sort of on again, off again with the World Anti-Doping Agency. The Russians were completely banned for a while. Then they weren't banned. The athletes weren't banned. But now more of them have been banned. They're getting retroactively. Retroactively, yeah. apparently, this is the most lax uh, testing, doping testing that and they're still of any passing? Olympics. Yeah, that where they <laughs> they started doing this kind of thing. Um, there was a whistleblower, apparently a Russian whistleblower, uh, talking about doping, and uh, I believe she has said publicly, "If anything happens to me, I was assassinated." <laughs> and the IOC <laughs> is apparently washing their hands. Oh, of course. I have news in front of me. The IOC president is saying we are not responsible for any dangers to which Mrs. Stepanova may be exposed. Mm -hmm. Wow. She's a great spot. So, you know what? Number two is looking pretty fucking strong number right now. Number two is shaping up. Unbelievable. Number two is, it's unfolding, it's unfolding right now. Yeah. Yeah. My number two has not really happened so far. It may not happen. Uh, my number two is a terrorist hostage situation. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I went for I went for broke though. Drama. Here, yeah. Of those, you know, n nothing. Nothing so far. Uh, but uh, you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I think you had a couple little spins on it too. They would. Oh yeah, It'd be that's a right. terrorist hostage situation fueled by um, drug cartel money. Right, but yeah. fueling radicalized Muslims, I think, was the specific. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, but these days you. We'll, we'll give you points for any of the hostage. above. But, yeah. Well, if there's a hostage and it's not a bunch of Islamic terrorists, are you going to give me what, like half a point or something? Like, no, I'm that would be sure. just be. That's just rude. Yeah, you're right. You know, like I'll give you full points. Sure, maybe if it's someone who's not radicalized by a religion and still. Holding a terrorist uh, hostage, uh, you could you could argue that it was just being influenced by uh, the media, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Media, media. Terrorists. So, what was your number one? My number one. <laughs> okay, either a sailor or a swimmer or some kind of boatist uh, would emerge from the water on TV in front of the cameras, covered in human feces, mm. and um, and the bonus for that one that we tacked on was. Some kind of dead body. That's true. Yeah. Which is sort of unfolding It's now. sort of happening right now. There's right. A, a leg, a, a foot. And an unidentified body an part? An unidentified body part, oh, yeah. which is apparently where the beach volleyball is happening and close to where the sailing is happening. You know what so, is the most fucking outrageous part of that is watching a CNN part that says, well, well, there's no evidence of foul play. You mean because there's no evidence other than body well, parts? Well, you know what? Maybe the body parts are... Are the are evidence? The evidence. Yeah. Hello. Let's, uh, why don't you start CNN. Uh, doing your fucking job, you dipshit? Journalist school Un must have failed the class on oh, evidence. Oh, there's a bunch there. of dead bodies. Well, we we don't know it's a murder. Uh, <laughs> well, I think this is the foul play in front of us. Yeah. 
And it's the fact that it's in pieces is not great. That waterlogged blackened foot, I think, speaks volumes. Hello. Like if it was a full person who was overturned and slightly bloated, yeah. like they could have maybe drowned or died of like Ebola. Had an Ebola OD of whatever. some kind. Yeah. yeah. If from fucking the water or something like that. Oh, but, show. But, you know, I don't know if it was the same beach, but definitely on a beach. There was a BBC uh, broadcast oh, yeah. where that was uh, it turns out uh, if, if you looked closely, now. <laughs> there was some sex on the beach. <laughs> and, uh, I'll take that sex it, on the beach. Check out the link we'll, we'll, we'll post. Uh, it's pretty funny. I love how the, the guy's like, they're reading a book. Seriously, guy? I mean, is that the best you can... It, reading a uh, book, huh? No, no, listen. This He handled it in a... Proper British way. Unbelievable. Made light of it. We're going to find out what book they're reading later. Pro- you know what? He was probably saying it just for the kids. You know? You don't want to... Yeah, you don't want to be real with kids you don't and wanna... say... No, well, and, be, Olympics. and be truth. You know what? Fuck off with this kind of censored shit. Hey, there's these... I'm just saying. There's these dipshits in the background, British. kids, and they're banging. Why don't... Because, like, you know, here's when you're a kid... I've, I've been listening to a lot of interviews of people when they really started to turn on the folks around them. And it always comes about seven. Seven when you understand the principle of hypocrisy. Yeah. As soon as that happens, don't try to fucking lie to a kid because he will see right through you and hate your fucking guts. (laughs) Yeah. Stop lying to people. Yeah, okay, okay. That's it fucking sickens me. But right. yeah, like th- that shouldn't that should be the least alarming thing happening at the Olympics. So those are wait, wait, we forgot my number one. Yeah, so my my number one was, was uh, human, human feces, feces, but I did I think I'm getting the bonus. Maybe we'll we'll check in at the end for the, for yeah, the yeah, dead yeah. body. Well, we need we actually we can only determine this probably in two months from now who's the winner because yeah. the the next one my number one was that there was going to be a political coup. Yes. and I did get within, myself a two months within two months. I give exactly. myself two. One thing, so that is the furthest we any of the bets go go for. You know, we haven't heard a peep from any politician, to my knowledge, during the Olympics. Not, not well. The there was Mr. there was when the uh, president guy was being booed when he gave that. Speech. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. Well, I think they're keeping uh, a, a distance. Low profile. Yeah, low profile. Yeah. Like you know, I'd keep a low profile as in in the bunker, <laughs> waiting with the like armed guards for some fucking coup to happen. My like God. honestly. Honestly. So, yeah, just a quick roundup of other things going on. We have a lock T gate. Wait, so uh, I think on our last podcast we talked about this as a legitimate thing, but it turns out that it's much more interesting. The uh, the athlete so that was being uh, held at gunpoint is a liar, liar, pants on fire, who's basically put all of his friends in serious danger. You know, well, I think they're all out now. They're in the clear. I believe one of them has to pay a lot of money, or maybe that's a separate incident. But uh, I think I think they're back in the states, and it's all really the last thing I saw is they were being indicted. Uh, Usually that's not good. Yeah, maybe it's it's a fluid situation. Well, well, it's going to be fluid, especially considering the fact that this finally really did happen to a Brit guy, which they're going to probably want to close this locked gate because it's going to look embarrassing and be like, "Hey, you were never robbed at gunpoint. No one ever will be." Yeah, well, apparently this one's real. I mean, I guess anything could be false news from Rio, but. Uh, <laughs> you know, for a bunch of drunk guys, I guess they did pick a fairly plausible story. It just turned out that they were on camera and, you know, their story mm-hmm. got proven. Oh, false. there was a gunpoint in their face, but it was by security guards who were like, stop destroying property, give us money for it. Because that's the solution to everything in a third world country. Give me money. Money, 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 money. I mean, we had a friend money. who, uh, for a while, we were living in a second world country. He ran over someone who well they basically smashed into him and what was the solution to that it wasn't the legal process money. it wasn't anything it was fucking money he paid the cops and they shut the fuck up and even the judge okay that's that's how far back it goes it's like everybody's got to have a cut if you decide that you're going to bring anything to trial you better be ready to pay everybody off bitch all right so just do yourself a favor and just pay off the cops that's all you got to do just pay off the cops. And they were just fool enough to pay off probably just the security guards, which is a mistake. Don't pay those motherfuckers. They're barely going to fucking hold their stories yeah, together. Yeah, very, very low ROI. They're, yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you, you know, I, I hope that people know out there that bribery is probably the third largest commodity in the world of what being traded. I think there's about one or two trillion dollars of money floating around. For bribes, there are companies that have hundreds of millions of dollars in fucking bank accounts you don't know about to bribe countries, not 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 people, 
Whole countries, man. Okay, that's the fucking world you live in. All right, the world of bribery and drugs, <laughs> madness, madness, madness. Anyways, is that it with the Olympics? Yeah. So uh, there, there's some things on our radar. Like apparently they've run out of cash, and the Paralympics have to be severely scaled back. Oh yeah, the Paralympics. We'll, we'll catch up on that as it comes in. Sure, sure. Information flowing. Yeah. But uh, so far, so far, I think we're gonna give we're, we'll give Tom the brown, but. Yeah, uh, I, I came out strong uh, at the beginning with my predictions, we'll but see, we'll though. see what... Uh, yeah, we'll see. I think there should also be, yeah. uh, you know, like when you calculate the points, I think it should be more, much more of a, a complex matrix of factors. Like if your number one happens, but you didn't, all the other minor ones didn't happen, I think you should still win. That's fine, yeah. So if you get your political coup, for yeah. sure you'll clean up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. That's all what right. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Fair, fair. Proportionality. Fair. Okay, let's get, let's get to our main event, so, which is to talk about... A video game that almost every single one of you, regardless of whether or not you play games, will have heard about because that's the effect of social media now. And these guys hit social media so fucking hard for months that you could not ignore No Man's Sky. So you've heard about it, even if you haven't played it, and you have an opinion about it as a consequence because it was forced on you for so long that I don't think you have a choice. So before we begin, now you heard about this game very, very slightly. I'd say, because you're, you're probably the least social media knowledgeable guy I've ever met, Mr. B. Uh, social I mean, media? I mean, what, what do I mean, you mean? you stink. But... Like, if I was to tell you what are the tr- currently trending topics right now, I can tell you probably out of the top of my head, and I don't think you could even, like, guess one. Gosh. No. Kardashians? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, you are correct. Wow. There was, ding, ding, ding. there was a Kardashian news event, something about baby pictures, whatever, that was popping in the news. But that's just, that's some fucking low-hanging fruit, bitch. I'm not going to give you that one. Not, you, you, bitch. Come up with something new. <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyways, so the point is that's you fair. heard, you heard a little bit about it. What was, what did you know about it before I showed it to you? I just knew that it was... Uh... It was like a space kind of game, and uh, gosh, that's, that, it? that's about it. That's honestly. about it. Right. Yeah. So when I did show it to you, and I showed maybe the first thirty minutes of it, basically I was able to uh, show him what it looks like by the time you've done the first mission, which is to fix your ship and get off the very first planet, right? And, yeah. And see if you can start exploring the universe. So when you saw it. What was your first impression? So you were on, I was on a planet and you saw all the nature and stuff. And, and your impression, at least from a technical level, was? Uh, you know, I thought it was, it was neat. It was very slow to generate, I guess, the first planet or whatever. But I thought the, the procedural, uh, I guess we're on a PS4, eh? yeah. um, the procedurally generated world was actually kind of neat. Uh, the plants were cool. The animals were cool. Um, it seemed fun that you were trying to build up and fix your ship by kind of mining raw minerals and stuff so it has a bit I of can that minecraft it. quality yeah there, yeah exactly and i think crafting shit um I, I would be interested in playing it just to see like what the next world would be like if they're just, just rinse and repeat or if there's really a different dynamic to are you just going to try to fix your ship on the next planet or are you doing something more interesting um, is it just a series of completely random worlds and everyone is different but in an insignificant way or does does a story develop that that's what I would be interested in so I can answer those questions because I've played probably about 30 hours spoiler alert so but there is no see that's the thing there really is no spoiler uh, but it does depend on how you play so the here's what I would say I would say no man's sky is the the most interesting of ambitious projects to come out early into the gate because it was it's the first one to really start using procedural generation in a way that uh is different like i mean there's there's another game called elite dangerous they'll have they 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 recreated an entire galaxy which is still pretty impressive with 200 billion worlds and shit and most of them have not been discovered but it's just one galaxy these guys are 16 quintillion or something worlds which is I think that the, the thing that works the most against them. It's almost the unlimited part of this world. The we, we will make no attempt to give it some kind of order that actually works the most against it. Because in this 16 quintillion, it's all in one galaxy where the, the stars seem randomly aligned. So you, you know like when you look at a galaxy, it's kind of a flat disk? Yeah. 
it, there's no flat disk here. It's like a giant nebula of endless planets that never make you feel like there's a sense of a center. Oh, I see. Okay. The point of the game is to get to the center of this galaxy that has that hmm. many planets. But what is a center in a world in which there is there is almost seemingly no up or down? Like, even a disk like a galaxy, sure, I have no up or down. But there's some form to it that is understandable for me if I zoom out. But there's no zooming out of this world. Right. The more you zoom out, the more everything looks the same. I mean, I zoomed out for three minutes and I saw just dust clouds and points. Hmm. And because of that, because there's was no... Was it disorienting? Or... It, was, it, was the, it was the most disorienting thing in the beginning. Like, well, it, it depends. Because here's the thing. I played, Elite, I played Elite Dangerous. And that was one of the most disorienting thing. Only dealing with 200 billion. Even when you know, when, even when you see the galaxy map, sometimes when I was dealing with the minutia, I would be lost. So I, you can't even deal with a galaxy, yo. Like it's fucking hard to deal with that shit. Your brain too crappy to yeah. fucking deal with that. No number. sense of scale. No, and, and outside it, of your immediate and you world. will panic. You will fucking panic because if you travel around for a while, and you're like, I don't know where I am. Where is everybody? And you're just totally lost. So. I, I think that the issue is when you create games of this scale, you, you, you might be a mile wide, but you're an inch deep, where all of a sudden it's like, because nothing is really generated purposefully. It's all random. Right. And then when you, when you land on a planet, what, what happens as a result is a planet will always be the same, no matter if you go to the North Pole of that planet or the South Pole. And there's, that's the thing that's missing. The thing that's missing is that a planet isn't the same. A planet has different elements. It's a, it's a kind of fingerprint in a way, and they're missing that element. They're just like, well, there's only one. There's only like ten species, and that's what's being generated. And I feel like if they would have said, we're gonna scale it back, but each planet will be way more like detailed. Like take that sixteen quintillion number and yeah. shove it up your ass. Like you can give me something a little bit more reasonable, but more detail. You know, put the focus on. What well, counts, right? Put the focus on what the parts that are interesting. Like when you land on a planet, there's different species. Those are cool. They're neat, but they you start to see through the the algorithm. Okay, they might have tentacly legs or normal legs or yeah. weird like different color uh, plant that they eat. Exactly. Yeah. But you're like, I wish that that algorithm had been much more refined because it almost yeah. seems like you go like on a planet. I almost wish that you could just spend almost your entire time on that one fucking planet. And, you know, rather than just spend an hour and you've discovered everything, I'm like, look, if you're going to build planets, yeah, make me just almost spend... Like, I would love to see a game where a person can spend their whole time on this one little thing. Well, you know, that, that would be kind of neat, sort of... Uh... Not a sim Earth, really, but instead of making a galactic simulator that has random planets... Uh, make make a, a one simulator. one world simulator yeah. where you're discovering the entire fucking ecosystem, and the everything about the planet, the way it works, the the sea, the the sky, like everything. I everything. think. Well, see, the the thing is, procedural generation will change games forever. Yeah, it'll change games forever in two ways. One, it's going to start to push CPU power up again because. The thing was, with most video games, you were always limited by the GPU, by the graphics processing unit. But procedural generation requires a lot of CPU power. So combine procedural generation CPU power heavy shit with artificial intelligence that's CPU heavy as well, and you realize that much of the workload is actually starting to be put on the systems themselves. This is why the console generation is going to die. Because the needs of VR, the needs of AI, the needs of procedural generation it's gonna are going to usher push in the age of a new, a new desktop era. A new, or laptop yeah, era. Yeah, yeah, like a fucking push to say, okay, well, the graphics areas, like there's new interesting things happening there for sure, but they're no longer our limit. Our limit will now be the opposite of what it was for a long time, which will be the CPU. And I think that's actually kind of interesting because... I, I, I mean, first of all, with games, procedural generation could be used, like you said before. Fuck this building a universe. It's a planet discovery thing. Go underwater. Go in caves. Go 12 miles deep. You know, like, explore this entire planet that we've created. And the, the neat thing about that is if you were really decided to create this world, every person that explores 
is generating information, right? Like it's it, the oh, more yeah, players, for sure, for sure. the better the world becomes. Yeah, if, if and they're that's all in the same world. Unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. the interesting thing about that kind of thing. Where I did like the to focus on the procedural part. I did like the me. the idea of naming a species, and that would be yeah, that way more cool. fun if it were a shared world. And not just a shared like universe or you, something. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? So that someone could fall on the bug that you named. Yeah. But there's like a hundred million different types of bugs, so you might right. you know, you might be able to discover your own. And I think that Or you name the you know, the genus or the kingdom of, of species and then if you discover another species within that, you have to keep the first part of the name and then put your, your second. Part I mean, out. who knows what kind of imagination might be on realism with this. This is a technology Ra like that that we're only beginning to explore now we're, we're only really starting to understand its capabilities and that's like i said that's what's exciting i mean no man's sky for me when i bought it i mean a lot of people complain about it. they were like oh they didn't fulfill their promises and i'm like they're an independent game company all right and you can fault them for like making more you know all these crazy promises but they they had a deadline and they reached that deadline and they had a they had half the product they offered you well, you're going to have to accept the fact that the difference between console and PC gaming is that most PC games are released piecemeal, like uh, Star Citizen. Just basically, they, they did their whole gamer con right after the big disappointment from No Man's Sky and showed their procedural generation and their planet landing. And it was so sexy that every news outlet basically fucking, you know, dropped their load on them. They'd be like, oh my god, this is beautiful. Oh, you're... you're Fuck No Man's Sky. It's so much better when you have so much more focus on systems and things. Yeah. So, you know, here you have a PC game that that can say, we don't have a launch day. We are releasing this bit by bit. We're showing you our builds. But when's it coming out? Fuck you when we're done. And that's a, that's a completely different attitude about building things, about releasing shit i mean could you imagine yeah, no, a the, movie the, where it, they were doing it's a, it's a much more interesting release cycle and it's sort of what happens with web web development and uh and apps you know for various you well, know tablets and phones it's like release often and release early and, just, and then plus it's like, a continuous kind of thing where you always get updates and it's always in development yeah, so you, you who have cares if they remain in alpha or beta forever like People are getting new stuff all the time. And well, th this it's just is, cool to be on that path. It, this is where, like I said, this is the change of, and why console gamings won't be able to keep up with that because I've supported multiple games that release these sort of beta types, gameplay you know, test areas that not only give a preview but also allow people to do the testing that normally you would have to pay people to fucking do. I mean, I, I, I'll make a slightly different technological prediction. I don't necessarily think the console will die completely, and I don't think it'll just become a sort of Nintendo basic, uh, you know, a system that you, no one cares about graphics anyway as much. Uh, and uh, like, I, I don't necessarily think there will be a huge wedge between low-end consoles and PC gaming, um, unless the consoles don't adapt. And I think one of the only ways. Uh, they will have to adapt is offloading some of the more complex procedures to the cloud. So when your planet gets generated, they spin up, I don't know, some crazy virtual machine that will crunch the numbers in like three seconds instead of, well, what did we wait? Five minutes or whatever for the, for the game. Um, so I think the consoles, if they want to survive, will have to be smart and sort of become a hybrid device that leverages huge amounts of CPU uh, for these interesting AI bits or, or what have you, uh, or procedurally generated maps, so that your local you know device doesn't have to do it. I suppose that it, it, it kind of depends. Like imagine all of a sudden tomorrow a company develops a quantum computer uh, that's that yeah. they're, they that they can really use. That, then all this offloading CPU shit would be nothing. The only thing that would limit them is actually the internet speed in which they could actually right, offload exactly, this. Right, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, there could be a lot of game changers in the next few years. But, but will that happen? I don't know. Like, what what is a console fundamentally? It's just a cheap PC that's... Uh, devoted to uh, one uh, thing. Uh, devoted to one thing, but, like, from a product point of view, you have to wonder, how does Sony or uh, Xbox think about the console... They probably think, you know what, this is partially a marketing move and we're going to sell a, a cheap 
PC, basically, maybe even at a loss, so that we can have a good five years of selling content and games and recouping the money uh, over and over again. Uh, so it is a PC, really. It's just fixed hardware. And like the PC, things are, are going to leverage the cloud and, and all that well, to, uh, to perform. It's an interesting idea that um, if they are able to really capitalize on this sort of cloud CPU shit. Right. That you're right that they might have a w ability to survive, but I, imagine, I think it's the only but, way to but survive. But look, honestly. look at look at kind of this area. So all of a sudden if you if you have a PC market that's suddenly emerging from this and they're also able to utilize that with their existing platforms, then I still think that the consoles would be so behind because the the thing is there's two technologies that are going to compete. I don't know which one's going to be the winner. It's HoloLens like technology or VR. So augmented yeah, versus virtual. This yeah. is basically the fucking battle. I don't know who's going to fucking win, but in both those situations, you need a fucking massive amount of CPU. Like, uh, you're going to need a lot of... Uh, yeah, I, th I think they're both immersive technologies and they tap into something way more interesting in the brain. Um, it's probably... My prediction there is they're going to converge and you're just going to have a switch that will allow you to flip between complete immersion and augmented kind of stuff. It's true that maybe they're they're not they're not competing so much of their complementary. Right now they seem like two different things, but ultimately they're the same. Mm. I guess so. We just want to escape reality. That's just really what we want. We do, or we want the reality that we have to be a better. little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the first thing that's going to happen in augmented reality is uh, what they already offer with certain apps is to make you look better. Like, there will be augmented reality apps right. where you will be prettied up. What's that movie? It makes other people look better. It's like a guy wears this implant that makes his girlfriend hotter or something. And it I don't fucks, remember this. fucks with her relationship. <laughs> I don't remember uh, this. I think it's even more crazy. That's I think crazy. It may, he decided to make his current girlfriend look like his ex-girlfriend. Oh, God. Oh, God. Is right. I, did, where did you see this movie? Uh, you know what? I'll have to... I'm so Put bad at links, this stuff. Man. Yeah, you were bad. I'm bad see at this stuff. See if we can find this. In, I think in, I saw a trailer probably on an interesting Netflix premise. or Apple TV or something. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see more of this. We're gonna, and In fact, some of the stories that I've been writing deal with, uh, with this sort of augmented reality slash... You know, like, what, what are we going to want to augment? What do we want to ignore? Because augmenting reality isn't about making it better. It's sometimes it's about ignoring the parts that you don't like. No, you know what the future is? It's fucking artistic PowerPoints. That's what it is, okay, folks? Everybody's going to see the light <laughs> soon. And uh, I don't want to reveal too much, but here's what I will say. So my main focus in the past few years, I think, has gone back to saying, uh, I want to I want to create interesting and, and cool shit and I don't think I need to make it more specific than that you know like I don't want to necessarily have a political message or whatever I just kind of want to have a story that makes people be like what the fuck just happened like you know mess with people's heads and I think that's enough and and if I can do that then I think I'll be happy for a little while so we're going to be showing you shit that's going to mess with your head in a good way but it, we wouldn't really deserve the name sketchy if we didn't do that did we no, yeah. not really. There's a there's a grander idea at work, and you'll see it, folks. I mean, it, it coming slowly but surely. You know, as a yeah. as we express our it, there will be a side. transition, of and course. it'll be it'll be quite Renorious. animated. Oh, animated! I like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah, a good yeah. uh, that's a good uh, preview word. So with that, I think we're pretty much done. I mean, unless uh, you want to make one more last Olympic uh, prediction. Oh man, okay, Olympic prediction, off the top of my head. Uh, Man, okay, so th this will be a prediction not for the games, but post-game Brazil. Mm -hmm. I think their economy will keep tanking. The political uh, situation is going to get much worse. And I, I think there might be some kind of, uh, I mean, I hope there will be some kind of wake-up that the country will have that, hey, the problems that they're experiencing come from within. And uh, maybe it'll change the way people behave to one another and business is done it's it just seems it's just like some kind of like hopeful fucking you know there, there's message. good and bad people everywhere right. in the world i think we can agree but there's something about this country that's in this mad you know development race uh to to become first world they're not there yet uh that i think it's going to make them question their society it's going to make them question the bribery the question the idea of having favelas all over the okay, city but how no see i gotta say 
that this fucking hopeful shit. No, I don't. I don't. I don't I'm necessarily gonna, I'm gonna quash it. I don't necessarily think it's going to be turn out well. I think there there will be a wake up call, and it, it'll probably be very depressing. There's there's, there's so often no wake up call, yeah. and most often in those kinds of places, what ends up happening is that in 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 order for things to be stable, a lot of people will disappear. So so, so maybe what will happen is either, you know, on the best case scenario, uh, some kind of nice populist movement which will merge the uh what do they call them the asphalt dwellers and the favela people uh and they'll live in one big happy city and they'll make amends and all that but, but probably it's going to be a much more fierce sort of maybe it'll revert back to some kind of crazy military or dictatorship run country just to organize shit because you know societies in chaos often revert back to a, a authoritarian that's exactly what you know, they're going to do they're not it's it might get pretty bad they're not gonna have some fucking i mean like even the arab spring was no good garbage like as soon as you have like in our modern world the ability for militaries to organize themselves and mobilize themselves has never been as strong as it is now you're fucked i mean they have a machine that can make sound turn it into pain Right. What the fuck are you going to do about that, you little ant? I mean, you messed up. And and you know what? You know how you messed up? You messed up thinking that you ha your voice mattered. No, no, no. It doesn't. It really doesn't. Your voice don't matter. Nasty. Sorry about that. Sorry. But anyway, I, I think Brazil will be changed for better or for worse because uh, of the Olympics. And not just in the, oh my God, we have all these stadiums that no one's using. Uh, and not just, oh, we have this huge bill for something that was worthless, but maybe in a more fundamental, like, structural, societal way. So... That's kind of a weak prediction. Yeah, like, that's almost pretty, obvious, it's, it's, but, yeah. but I, it would, I'm interested in seeing where that'll go. Look, the spike in crime means one thing. It means that it, what, I th what I predict the is that there is, aren't winning. there's effectively going to be a power grab from the drug cartels. And we may see a winner come out of this. Because if there's a spike in crime, and particularly a spike in prostitution, which always happens at these kinds of events. like And these are money makers. All right? there's, there's women being exploited like a motherfucker. You know there's a deal now going on at the Olympics? Like it's half off for fucking prostitutes. For the Olympics. Half off. Half off. Yep. So get your get your get off on the half off. <laughs> get your half off tonight. Get your half off tonight, bitches. So uh, yeah, madness. So it's uh, it, it'll get worse before it gets better. Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, really seriously, what a great Monday. Anyways, we're gonna catch everybody. Uh, I guess the, the next podcast will probably be the last week of the Olympics. So I guess we'll see who's the winner. Well, winner. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do a tally and we'll, we'll also do a tally see what's up for the Paralympics coming up. Uh, that should be and post Olympic yeah. madness yeah. will obviously be covered. So we'll have a we may have a short term winner and a long term winner. I mean that's not that's an Olympic level hangover to be from, determined from everything that happened. <laughs> but until then, I I suggest that uh, you uh, I don't know don't watch the Olympics. Okay, you're you're only supporting the madness. Don't don't uh, don't watch the the whole place go down in a drain. Watch uh, watch something more interesting. Watch like Stranger Things. That's a that's a good show. You should Do just it. watch that and just ignore the world for a little while because it's gonna make you depressed. All right. Well, <laughs> with that, my number is fourteen, Mr. B. All right. Go fuck yourself, bitch.